How's it going everyone? Tuga here, back again with some more NHL 16 and my Back to the Basics tutorial series. Now for this video, this is certainly harder to make than the offensive positioning tutorial because simply put, this game doesn't cater to doing this, but really what this will help establish is you knowing who is your responsibility to take care of. Now again, this is back to the basics. This is very simple stuff, and if you find this to be redundant, and I know I say this on a lot of the advertising posts I put out, if you find this to be redundant, it simply wasn't meant for you, but however, some of my tutorials down the line may actually help you. Not to say I'm the best either, but anyway, back to the point. This game doesn't cater to realistic hockey. We all know that, but having realistic tendencies can help and it can especially help build communication between you and your teammates and the expectation. Knowing where your teammates are going to be on the ice is such a major, major help in this game and can help your play without you really even realizing it. Now again, I'm going to break this down much like I did in the last video, but again, a lot of the times teams don't even play possession, so a lot of the times this isn't necessary. Teams will simply skate in, look for a cross crease or a wrist shot, and retreat, maybe a little bit of forechecking. Now what you're going to see here are shaded areas that are colorized with each individual player indicator. When the puck is in your zone, this is where you need to be as each individual player. We'll start off first with lefty using Colton Pareko. Now there are numerous different situations as to where you want to be and when you want to be there. For example, when the puck is in the bottom left hand corner, the left defenseman needs to be down there to fend them off. Particularly anywhere in this area, again you see the shaded area, that is where the lefty needs to shut people down when the puck is in that area. But I will say this one thing, you notice behind the net is not exactly shaded in. You don't really want to chase behind the net, you don't have to. As you can see where I am positioned right now with Pareko, for the most part, whether it's a stick lift or a poke check or he's coming around for a wraparound and you hit him with the body check, you don't need to go behind the net. That just opens up space. You want to shut down the slot whenever they are behind the net. And again, if they go for a wraparound, that's when you want to approach. But you see it kind of cut off a modified trapezoid down there at the bottom. There's no need to chase. Now when the left defender is in that bottom corner, as you can see, the center, he has his own little shaded area there, but it does kind of intersect with the two defensemen, and it is the center's job to shift down and cover whatever defenseman is in the corner. This way, you always have a net front presence. And as you can see as well, the left wing then kind of changes up where he goes. It's constant, simple zone defense, much like in the offensive zone, where you always know where your players are going to be. Here in the defensive zone, that's just as important. So again, just basically, as you can see on the screen, the shaded areas. These are generally where you want to be, but depending on where the puck is, that changes. Again, if the puck is in the left-hand corner, you now see where the left wing should be. You now see where the center should be covering you. Everyone kind of comes in a little bit closer to help defend. With the center not exactly playing the slot, it really does become dependent on whatever winger the puck side is on to help close down the slot. It's the same thing here if you are the right defenseman, the center covers you, the right wing pinches down just a little bit more, but he is still in position to cut out a pass up to the D or cut out a cross crease pass to their right defender up top who could potentially hit a one-timer. It's just basic, simple, responsible, team-oriented defense. So as far as your two defensemen go, that's pretty much your job. If the puck goes in the corner, you're there to clean it up and you have to have the confidence in knowing that the front of the net is being covered by your center. Even if your center isn't the best defenseman, even if he's a sniper or a playmaker and doesn't have a good defensive rating, just having an extra body in front makes all the difference rather than one defenseman being there. For example, right now we'll switch it up and we'll say Pareko is the right defenseman. Now as you can see, in this example, we have the left D down in the corner and the center is not properly covering the top of the slot. What happens when the puck gets brought out by their player and starts to cut in front? He has an option. Now your right defenseman's pretty much fucked regardless, and if you have a human goalie, it's an even more difficult decision. When that enemy player starts to cut in, you as the right defenseman, do you go after him? Do you go for the body check? Do you go for the stick lift? Because if you guess wrong, and particularly, again, if he has someone to pass to on the far side and he gets that pass through, 
your goalie is pretty much screwed, particularly, again, if he's a human goalie, with how difficult cross-crease passes are in this game and always have been. So again, you're the right defender. The puck is in the left-hand corner. The enemy team brings it out, starts to cut inside. You go for a body check. The pass gets through. The puck ends up in the back of the net. But what happens if you have a center properly covering? The right defenseman simply shifts over, covers the one-time pass, while the center is able to take out that first threat. So again, now that we've covered the two defenders, we'll talk about the center. And as you can see, that big center zone that looks really, really awkward. And the center's main job is simply to shut down the slot and help the defenders shut down the slot. You need to be that guy here. Everyone knows how effective the wristers are from the high slot and from the side of the net. And that is the center's job when the puck is already in the zone. To zone over, take that option away. To get over to this side, take that option away. People love their shots from right up the middle. And that's not to say you can't help out your left wing or right wing if they lose their man. Now you saw the zone coverage for left wing or right wing, and we'll get to that in a second. But for example, in that top left hand corner near the blue line, the left wing overcommits. He doesn't get the puck. Not everybody needs to charge forward. Yes, you kind of want your defenders to shift up a little bit, but then that's when the center can step up and help take that man out or help cover that man. And if he does get, say from there, a pass down low, to the left hand corner we already know what to do as a center we come down and cover that left defenseman who's in the corner trying to grind it out and get that puck back it's the same thing on the right side as well just as you would suspect the right wing loses the puck their defenseman's looking to step up you take your position you cut out whatever he's trying to do particularly with shots he passes down the boards the right defenseman covers and you take the right defenseman spot in front of the net and yeah, it can get a little bit crazy. That person down low can send it behind the back of the net, in which case, obviously, the center would come over and cover for the left D while the right D gets back into his spot. Now, obviously, when you're a left wing or a right wing, your main job is to take away the point. And as you can see right now on the screen again, the little shaded zones. It really is pretty simple. A very simple job for you to do. And it's a fun job to do, particularly when it works, to get the puck off a defenseman who doesn't have the confidence or the skill to get rid of the puck in time. You pick him off and go on a breakaway. Very fun to do. But if you're in the right position, you're likely to get those chances more frequently. So again... You're in your zone as a left wing. You're just kind of shading around this area, covering that defenseman to make sure he can't get off one of those one-timers or really be a decent option. In this example, we'll say the puck is in the bottom left-hand corner. We move over with Pareko and you simply take away the boards and that passing option for that defenseman. As we talked about in the offensive positioning tutorial, ideally as a right defenseman, which their opponent player would be. You need to be on those boards to be a passing option. Now, obviously, the main thing you would think here is, okay, well, what about their lefty being a slap shot option? And that's where, the, of course, the right wing comes into play. The puck's in the bottom left-hand corner, so you close in, you collapse on that area. And as you can see, we have their lefty at the point, but the right wing, your right wing, rather than staying on the right boards for no reason, pinches down and still covers that guy. Again, it's a collapsing weak side lock, taking away all of their options and forcing them to make a play rather than just giving them basic cycling options. It's of course the same thing on the right side if it's in the bottom right hand corner. If you notice their defenders holding the boards, you simply move over to pinch. Your left wing helps take care of the other defender as he should and you're good to go. Now, of course, again, we mentioned before, if the puck gets dragged out of the corner by the opposing player. Now, we'll just move down here with Pareko. And what I talked about was the option for a wraparound. But obviously, right now we'll say Pareko is on the other team. You evade their right wing, and you start to crash in towards the net for an open wrist shot. That's where the right wing on the back pressure comes up. Now, hopefully this doesn't get too confusing. Obviously, using Pareko as a multiple example but again in this situation right now my user controlled player colton pareko on the st louis blues is not on your team as you can see your team's right d is in the corner where he should be the center is properly covering the left d is properly covering the right wing your your team's right wing has taken away their lefty option your left wing is covering properly however you will see this play a lot 
as Pareko on the other team digs the puck out of the corner he looks to step up for a shot and that is where your wingers come in handy because they've already collapsed they're not way up here right now where I'm showing you they're not way up there at the blue line waiting to get breakaways they're looking to help play cover defense and since your center cannot be in the slot that is when your wingers will drop down and help cover now you might be saying oh well, what if he passes it back to the point well hopefully by that time your right defender has been able to get back in front of the net we'll go down and show you for example Colton Pareko now is your right defenseman as you can see we'll just say their team's right wing we'll put up a funny color there that's the guy with the puck of course put that little puck indicator right there next to him that's the guy with the puck your center is still covering in front but hopefully your right winger who pinched down to cut him off has bided you enough time for your right D to move up your center has now been able to move back into the slot so now the other player on that team really has nowhere to go the right winger is covering the shot the center is getting back in towards his face if that person on the other team passes it to his defenseman your right wing simply engages while your center takes his proper space right back in front covering that slot and covering the guy who was potentially going to shoot and guys that is it for this video again this is back to the basics i'm treating this as a series for younger players or for those who are less experienced with nhl but even if you're an experienced nhl player a refresher isn't always a bad thing i just love realistic play and i'm telling you it is so goddamn satisfying to beat teams who do nothing but skate down the ice wrist shot skate down the ice cross crease it is so rewarding to beat them with smart and at least semi-realistic play and i promise you just learning these two simple systems and again the offensive positioning tutorial link on the screen now putting these two styles together again just basic zone coverage essentially defensively and offensively putting these styles together will make you a better team will make those wins feel that much more rewarding and generally i feel like you'll at least have a bit more fun with the game rather than doing the same thing over and over to score goals and if you guys would please make sure to do all that funny youtube crap leave a like subscribe if you've enjoyed and are looking forward to more and again any constructive criticism on this video is more than welcome as well and again thank you guys so much for watching more to come in the future and i'll see you guys next time